You might think we're throwing caution to the wind tonight when I tell you that we are mixing water and electricity. But they're safely separated. Actually, two different stories from two different museums. Now, the electricity story, not surprisingly, starts at the Science Center. But Patrick Murphy begins with the more curious pairing of water and art. Water. As the source of life on our planet, it fascinates us. Formless and transparent, it assumes the shapes of whatever holds it. As a solid, it cools. As a gas, it drives teapots and turbines. Still waters reflect our world. Waterfalls and fountains inspire us. Everyone appreciates water. That's a good thing, since three quarters of the Earth's surface is covered with it. Artists are particularly drawn to water. So what better theme for an exhibition at the Pulitzer Foundation than one called water? The Pulitzer is a structure built around water, with rooms and views that flow from a central water court. The building is the starting point because the water has a very strong presence uh, on a variety of levels. You have frame views of the water um, from a variety of very prominent places in our gallery space. You can define space even uh, uh, like a liquid substance, particularly our uh, space, because um, it's not space that is defined or that exists only because there are walls. It seems uh, as though the walls are bouncing off something that has liquid quality almost. And we even have a sculpture, Joplin by Richard Serra, which parts as if it were in a f river, which parts the flow of that space, um, that liquid uh, space. And within that liquid space, we are immersed in the subject of water. The first thing you see when you come into the entrance is this gigantic Roy Lichtenstein drowning girl. What's that all about? Well, it's about a drowning girl. <laughs> but um, this drowning girl says something which is very important. I don't care. I'd rather sink than call Brad for help. <laughs> so uh, the drowning uh, has also something to do maybe with emancipation. So she's emancipated enough uh, not to call him and rather drown in an emancipated way. The whole thing is an irony, obviously. So um, one of our basic fears with water is to drown. And uh, this being also the emblematic piece of our exhibition, um, makes out of this fear a joke. But there are pieces here that deal with drowning that aren't ironic, that aren't funny. Yes. So here we have another way of dealing uh, with drowning. It's uh, Cy Twombly and it is an antique myth, Hero and Leandro, um, a couple of lovers who both drown. Um, and when you look at these three paintings, um, you can read this uh, either from the left to the right, uh, the passion uh, of the lovers and their drowning and then the nothingness of death. Or you can see it like uh, going into the water and ultimately drowning and fighting with death. So both ways are possible. The way we presented these artworks in our main gallery is uh, they, these three works, they are opposite our water court. So this is another example of how the art and the building complement each other. Absolutely, absolutely. Contemporary art can be challenging. If you're looking for what it means, you might be missing the point. The key to appreciating it is bringing your own imagination to the process. It's all right to, shall we say, go with the flow? So uh, in this installation, it's uh, individual works by uh, an artist whose name is Richard Tuttle. Um, and the works um, seem to float like um, on the wall, as if we were in an aquarium. Um, but there's another relation to uh, water, uh, because each of them has an aquatic title. Um, the white one, for instance, for instance is called sail. Uh, the blue below here uh, is called water. You have parallel rivers, the pink one up there. And if you go to the ground, uh, you have fountain. But the titles are not um, really that close to the form because your imagination has to do quite a lot of work. Because that really doesn't look like, like water. water. No. And that doesn't really look like a sail. No. Uh, so you have to imagine something that makes the title 
coherent with the form. And it's a, and it's a game almost. So, Matthias, this is an exhibit with a bath? Yes, two bathtubs, actually. Uh, and uh, so the relation to water is the recipient of water. But if you look at it, uh, this bathtub um, by Rachel Whiteread is actually not the inside, but a cast of the outside. And it was cast in, 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 in four casts, so it is completely unusable as a bathtub. Now, this doesn't look very functional either. But uh, you see that it's a bathtub which might have been suspended to uh, dry. Um, and then when you look a bit closer to it, um, it looks almost like an umbilical cord. What makes these forms so interesting is that they are very ambivalent. They are still bathtubs because you can see it's the form of a bathtub. And yet it's something completely different. And that's a fascinating thing. Combine a dash of paradox with a touch of ambiguity, add some artwork, and serve in a fluid space. There you have the ingredients for a remarkable experience. Just add water.